Hi everybody, in this video, we're gonna do something really fun. We're gonna create a digital clock that displays the current time and then AM or PM afterwards, kind of like we see on the screen right now. Right now the time is 2.46 and the seconds are increasing from when it was 16 seconds when I started saying that to now 22 seconds, 23, 24. And so by the time we're done with this video, not only will the time be probably up by about 10, 15 minutes, but you would have also built something exactly like this from scratch. So let's get started. So here I have a very basic setup. I have an empty page called digitalclock.htm. There's nothing inside it. I'm in VS Code and I split my screen into two halves. One half is the code editor, VS Code. The other half is the example that we I'm currently displaying on screen. Let me go and switch to the version of the page I have open in my code editor, which right now is completely blank. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get my page started. In Visual Studio Code, if you're creating an HTML page, you can just hit the exclamation mark and enter, and it'll get a boilerplate starting point for your HTML content. So I have basically nothing here except some starting content HTML tags, head tags, body and HTML. Let's go ahead and start building it in this particular page. So the first thing I'm gonna do is replace the word document with the title I wanna go for. So digital clock, okay. Let me go and save this, let me refresh the page in the browser, and now you can see digital clock displayed at the very top of the screen. All right, so at least now we know that the code editor and what's displayed on my browser are all currently in sync, which is often the most difficult part sometimes of just getting your project started. And so now let's go ahead and talk about how we want our clock to appear. Because the digital clock is just gonna be some numbers and some text, and so it makes sense that our input element or the element that's gonna be representing our time will just be a text field, a simple P tag. So let me go ahead and type in P and close P and get something very simple going here. And right now the P tag is empty. Let me type in hello world, just to make sure something is going to be displayed on screen. Let me refresh the page and it can now, let me zoom in a bit. You can see hello world displayed on screen. So the P tag is doing its thing. And so like, well, the way to start typically is by first starting with some text and then formatting it to look like what our final output will be. So let me go and replace it with some time. I'm gonna put it like, you know, 4, 15, and 30 p.m. And so this way, we have an idea of what our final output will look like. It's really small right now. Let's go ahead and just get the visuals up and running so it looks proper. And so right now my daughter's knocking at my door. And so I'm just kind of like, it's, it's recording time, so no disturbing daddy just yet. Okay, so where were we? Oh yeah, we're talking about how to you know, approach solving a problem like this. I like to go with visuals first. And so now that we have the time basically displayed, let's go ahead and modify it so it actually looks more like the final time that we're kind of going for. And so let's go ahead and I'm gonna use the style tag and play some styles here. The first thing I'm gonna do is give this field a value. I'm gonna give it an ID and I'm gonna call it timer field, just so that we have an ID flag and this is gonna be used by JavaScript, so ID seemed kind of appropriate. So let me go ahead and type the, the selector for it, timer field, and this is a font size to 72 pixels, font family, let's make it you know, a monospace font so courier new, and have a fallback which is just monospace, in case if your system has a different monospace font that would be more appropriate. And so let's start with this right now. Let me refresh the page, and now you can see that our time is displayed in a much larger format. And in our example, if you look at it here, it's actually centered on screen. And I think it makes sense to do that for our, what we're trying to do as well. So let me go ahead and type in the body tag. And there are many ways of centering content on screen. I have some links to videos and articles I've written that talks about this, but the easiest way is to just rely on grid. So body is my selector, display grid, Place content, a pretty new so like, you know, new property, but now pretty widely supported. Center, I'm gonna set height to 100 VH because for example, we don't have enough content, so I wanna make sure it fills up the full height. I'm gonna go and set margin to zero and padding to zero. And let's go into the background color. Let's give it a nice gray color because, well, why not? You know, we have a dark theme going here, so let's go with light gray here. All right, I'm refreshing the page now. All right. Now you can see that with the changes we made so far, our time is now displayed in the middle of the screen 
uh, appropriately with a certain level of visual appearance. There's a little bit more we can do there to finish it out, but let's take a you know, side step from there and go back to the actual example we're trying to do, which is actually display the time. And so to display the time, this is gonna involve a little bit of JavaScript and more specifically, the date API or the date object that JavaScript provides for being able to work with time really, really nicely. And so, so we have the date API, it gives us the time. And what we really wanna do is make sure we update the time every second, ideally, to make sure that we're displaying the correct value as we're looking at it on screen. So it won't be a one-time thing, it'll be some sort of a loop that goes through and makes this all work. And we're gonna have many options in terms of loops, and we're gonna use one particular approach using request animation frame, as we're gonna see here. So at a high level, we're gonna have a loop that's gonna be essentially updating the screen every second. And with each update, the latest value of the hours, minutes, and seconds for the date object will be what we print on screen. So it's pretty simple. And as it turns out, it's not the most complex thing in the world. It just requires a, a few pieces that need to be arranged properly and connected and duct taped over. So we're gonna do all of that together right now. And so let me go ahead and create the script tag. Here's where all of our JavaScript will live. And so one of the first things I'm gonna do right now is Get a, get, a, no, get a link to the element that we want to have updating our screen. Select timer field. Well, actually, yeah, the timer field equals document.query selector hashtag timer field. All right, so now we have a way in JavaScript to be able to reference the DOM element that now represents our time. And so now I'm going to do, let's see, function timer. So this is what's going to be the loop that's going to be called to get our timer running. And let me go ahead and just call it timer right now. And right now if I refresh the page, nothing is really gonna happen because we really haven't done much with our JavaScript. We just kind of said, call the timer and then create a variable called timer field that's storing a reference to a DOM element, also appropriately called timer. So now let's go ahead and start getting the date populated. So let date equals new date. This is where the date object that will be responsible for getting us the system's hours, minutes, and seconds value. And so now that we have this to the seconds, that seconds equal date.getSeconds. These are all built into a date object, very handy, so we don't have to do any of our own work to get the seconds value and things like that. Let hours equals date.getHours, seems straightforward. And let minutes equals date.getMinutes. All right, so we have that kind of going for us. And so uh, usually during this time, I like to just pause for a second and make sure we didn't run into any mistakes. So I'm gonna save the page, refresh, the page is placed properly. Let me go to the console and make sure there are no errors there either. Okay, so no errors here either. So we're in a, we're in a pretty good spot. And I'm gonna keep the console up for now. I know it's gonna look a little kind of crowded here, but no, I'm also zoomed in heavily to make it easier for you to see things on video. All right, so we have this going for us. And so now that we kind of have this, one of the things we want to make sure is that we can either choose to have a 24 hour clock or a 12 hour clock. And my preference really is to go for 12 hour clocks. And what that really means is that if the hour value is greater than the number 12, then we just subtract 12 from it to make sure that you're back into the you know, one through 12 range as opposed to the 13 through 24 range. And so I'm going to do if hours is greater than 12, so if you like an add like 13 or something like that, go ahead and subtract 12 from the hours. And so that's a, that's a good spot right now. But when you are at 12 hour clock, we need to worry about AM or PM because otherwise you won't know if you're discussing the time in the, in the midnight, early morning or afternoon and you know, when it's sunny outside. So let me go ahead and create a valuable, did I say valuable? It, well, it's a very valuable variable called morning or evening evening, I'm going to default to the value AM. And what I'm going to say is, you know, if the hours value is greater than 12, subtract 12 from it. And that would mean that morning or evening would be PM because we're talking about an evening time. Otherwise, we know that the else case is when the hour value is less than 12 or less than 13 in this case, then set morning or evening equals AM. Now, actually, is this correct? Because if hours greater than 12, it needs to be hours greater than equal to 12, correct? Because if you're at 12.01, for example, that's considered PM. So I'm gonna say 12 equals greater than or equal to 12, then support that value. All right, 
So that's a pretty good spot now. Refresh the page again, everything looks good. And now just for kicks, let me just make sure to print what we have on screen. Console.log, you know, sec, you know, let's do hours plus, plus seconds, plus minutes just to make sure that everything so far is okay on screen. All right, 2.19.56 is what's being printed on screen, which is great because the time I'm guessing is 2.19.56. All right, now let's go ahead and clear this out. And now we have AM and PM working properly. So now let's go ahead and set the value to our timer. The timer field dot text content. It's gonna print this on screen. And the way I'm gonna print this on screen is by using a combination of variable replacement and making sure the syntax is also being padded appropriately. So first let's do hours and then I'm using the, the template literal approach so you can see the little, the little back tick right here that allows me to type in this way of like substituting a value without having to do the what I did earlier which is like quotation mark plus sign quotation mark plus sign and all of that. And so now padded minutes or actually just minutes and seconds. seconds. All right. And of course, we want to also specify morning or evening, you know, the, the infamous AM or PM value that is critical for a clock to look well. All right. So I've added all of these values in. Notice that because I'm using the back tick, the template string literal approach, I don't have to worry about spacing and formatting outside of just making the values look appropriate within my string itself. Let me refresh the page. And you can now see that the value 257.46, which is the correct time, is being displayed right now. Now, there's one more thing we need to do though, is we need to make sure our loop actually calls this code multiple times. And so I talked about using request animation frame, so we're doing it. And it's one of the better approaches because it's always gonna be in sync with the screen, but you can always also use set interval if you so choose. But I always use request animation frame because why not? So let me go ahead and add the timer, request animation frame timer within my timer function. Now we refresh the page, you can now see the value is updating every single time. Now there is one thing to kind of think, keep in mind though, is that right now the way it's displayed, like if we have a value that's two digits, great. But if it's only a single digit, it's gonna be essentially two colon eight colon. You want it to be zero eight. We wanna have some padding in front of it to make it look like it's made up of two values. And we can kind of see this, for example, if I just fake the minutes to be, instead of data get minutes, just put eight in there for now. Notice what you see there. You see 2849, which isn't actually correct. It's not a day, week, and month kind of a thing. It's actually a time. So it needs to look like it's 08, as you know, I think it's going to be shown here. No. And so what we need to do is, you know, add a zero if the value is less than two digits in length at the very beginning of the value. Now, this was something that used to be pretty tricky and complicated, but there's a handy method that strings come with called pad start, which allows you to specify the amount of padding to add and what character to specify for the padding itself. Seems pretty clear, you know, interesting and easy. So padded seconds equals string seconds value. I'm basically converting my seconds into a string. Right now it's a number. I'm forcing it to be a string by using this method. Then I'm going to do pad start two, and it's a, the character we're padding it with is literally the string zero. And similarly, let padded minutes equals string minutes dot pad start two and then quotation mark zero and then we're good to go there and all I need to do is just basically substitute in padding seconds padded seconds and padded minutes in the value that I'm actually printing to my screen right now so if I refresh the page notice what we see here you see three and then 06 and 05 which is exactly what we we're kind of looking for which is pretty convenient and pretty cool and so there you have it there is our clock and it's doing the time appropriately. You know, we can trust that AM and PM are being handled appropriately as well. So just for kicks, I can set the hours to be 12 and see what it looks like. You can see it's gonna say, you know, in this case, 12. Well, there's a little bit of a bug in my logic here. If hours is greater than 12, set it to 12.36 AM. Okay, so there's a slight bug here because if my hours is greater than 12, you should say PM though. And so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna move this code out. If hours is greater than or equal to 12, morning or evening equals PM, else 
morning or evening equals AM. And let's close it back here again. Let's refresh the page. Now I see 12.01 PM. Okay. See, I, I like how it's kind of like a case where as we're building this and I'm explaining to you, I noticed some bugs and I'm cleaning it up right now. So, so yeah, so I just broke the logic to make AM and PM work correctly. And now 3.01 AM or PM, it's greater than 12. Now what's going on here? If actually another logic error, we want to make sure we're working the original value, not the modified value. All right, now we're correct, 3.01.34 p.m. So, wow, that was quite something. All right, so now we've gotten to the point now where we have an example that works exactly the way it does. There's some visual formatting that I have in the example they didn't show in the video right now. That's okay. I have a link to a written article where I go into more detail on those extra visual flourishes that makes this work. But at a high level, something as simple as a digital clock covers a lot of interesting things beyond just being able to manipulate the value in the DOM and showing a new value, but also using the date object to be able to get the hours, seconds, and minutes, and then normalizing for AM or PM and adjusting the 12 hours depending on whether you're on a 24 hour clock or 12 hour clock, and some of the little gaps that you think about as you saw here, we had to go back and cover those things up. If you need any help, post in the forums at form.crypt.com where I and others will be happy to help out with any questions you might have about dates and times and other JavaScript things, or just web dev topics in general. If you like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that I'll be making very quickly. And follow me at Krupa on Twitter and other places where I talk about web development and other web development -y things. And lastly, if you like watching videos, if you like reading content online, you might also enjoy reading content in a paperback form. And so a lot of the stuff I write about is in a variety of books. So the link to my books are at the bottom. Check them out in paperback and Kindle editions. And with that, I will see you all next time.